I'm going to show you different ways to make your house more child friendly, more Montessori friendly, you know, in one day without any kind of materials, any kind of expensive furniture or anything that you cannot find, you know, probably straight away in your house or maybe you're going to have to go to the local supermarkets um, to find one or two things, but you should be able to make your house more Montessori friendly, you know, straight away with all these little tips. So I'm going to show you how I do that in my house because my house is not a house for little children anymore. My children are 8 and 12 so they're not little anymore and basically they, I do not need those little extra um, bits that allow them to have access to their toys, that allow them to have access to the uh, cutlery or to have their coats or to help them to put on their shoes. Um, but, you know, all these things were super easy to put into practice uh, uh, when my children were very little. If you really start to think away from what you see on social media, and obviously you can reach that goal to have a perfect house uh, with special monastery furniture and so on, it's great as well. But if you want to start today and if you want to do it very simply on a budget with what you have, then watch out because I'm going to show you all of that. So we're going to start with the hallway. Hallways in general in any house is always a bit messy. If you have watched uh, my house tour, I have explained how I've made this hallway. Uh, it was uh, that videos about my house tour was four or five years ago and here I need some new common hooks. So yes, the common hooks are great but they don't last forever. So a little bit of running with that. So it's super easy to fit common hooks. Um, you have first, uh, you know, the sticky part that you pull apart and you remove the red bit, the red part of <laughs> the common hook and that going, you're going to apply that on uh, the hook, on the plastic hook at the back. Then you remove the black label and you uh, press and apply wherever you want on a wall. So the wall has to be previously wa washed a bit, wipe, and then you let it set for around 10 minutes. So your yeah, common hooks are cheap. Uh, you can find them in most supermarkets uh, and most, uh, you know, uh, do-it-yourself stores and everything like that. Um, they're not perfect. Uh, this one is a real brand common hook and still uh, after uh, a year or two they failed or if you put uh, something that is too heavy so you just check the weight uh, and they kind of take away a bit of paint uh, but it's much better than have to screw and, uh, and make holes into your walls if you are in a rental and that's something that you can do today. You can also use the common hooks on the side of a shelf and or inside a door like in my son's wardrobe we have a common hooks and that stay on um, much better than the ones we had on the wall. Also in the hallway, sometimes you don't have a space to put coat hanger or a space for the shoes, especially if you have a young toddler, you don't need much. So I have used in the past a little toddler chair like that to uh, invite my, my child to sit on, to put on his chair. And what I'm doing there is to delimit it on the floor. Uh, a little square with cello tape, with masking tape, so you don't damage the flow and you have a little square that is super useful for uh, to just place uh, your children's shoes so like that he has, he has a dedicated space uh, to tidy up his shoes and that's, that's so useful if you have just one little toddler so you don't want to overwhelm your child with choices so he has one pair of shoes um, that is suitable for the season or for the weather outside and it's a trick that you can use as well if you go on holidays and or if you are in a rental, temporary rental in an Airbnb then you do uh, quickly with your masking tape that you will learn to take with you a little area uh, for your child to put on his shoes and the little toddler chair can be used just to hook uh, the jacket on the side and the shoes, so a very simple toddler area. So now in the kitchen, you know, uh, that 
that's always been the trouble for my children but obviously I started to be full in uh, to be uh, full of other stuff um, and so I just want to show you what I'm going oh to make it again you know toddler and young children friendly so obviously I'm starting to remove everything that is not useful for my children uh, when they want to participate in cooking so obviously because of their age they take everything from everywhere but they still have some uh, some tools in that drawer that they probably were not seeing and even some mugs uh, that they were not using lately because it was so full of other stuff so uh, you know it's life it's life at the moment <laughs> in quarantine uh, so we are all a bit overwhelmed at home um, working full-time with our children around us from home so yeah that was a good excuse this uh, lesson to show you oh i'm going to make it more child friendly more toddler friendly and remove anything that is not uh, useful for my children so now we are left with what is useful uh, so they still have some uh, cups and um, a chopping board uh, yeah. and so i'm adding you know anything that is can be useful for children so uh, their own mugs and uh, if you have a child who likes to set up the table i would put everything in a little basket like that you can take the basket straight away to the table that is uh, a 500 ml uh, jug uh, that is super useful because there is a lid and everything and some tools that they use um, or can use uh, by themselves so the apple cutter this set is from ikea it's quite sharp so i don't advise it for young toddlers or preschooler uh, you know uh, egg slicers uh, wavy shopper and something to cut the sandwich it's all stuff that they do use by themselves and yes that can be the place to put the water bottle uh, that they can take by themselves when we go out let's move on into kind of the play area so uh, if you have a little table that you use for snack or for your children having the activities it's always nice to have some art at the child's level so i use just uh, art cards from Osborne and you know with my trusty masking tape I just use that to hang the art card at the child's eyes level maybe you have seen that many Montessori family have an IKEA Kallax so we had this one for ourselves to store many stuff and when the children were little the bottom was used for their own activities so it's not great if you have bulky monster materials like the rods uh, but in our case um, we were not using the Kallax for this kind of activities so if you just need to to display toys uh, and you have already you know any kind of furniture like shelving furniture so the Kallax or like a bookshelf just don't think too much and just remove the stuff so obviously you will have to find a space for the things that you're removing that are not part of your children's belonging but uh, let's pretend that in those book, big boxes it's your children's toys and you just need to display them on the shelf in a way that is going to be on view for them and more accessible so that's what i'm doing here and i want to show you that you do not need you know fancy baskets to start with these are baskets that I found, you know, in my local uh, dollar store uh, or in your local Aldi, Lidl, this kind of shop or, you know, thrift store. Um, it's where I found most of my baskets and, uh, you know, just start with what you have at home. So if you want to do some things today, just find any plastic wicker basket that you have. This one is, uh, you know, the vegetable basket, the one you got from the shop and, uh, you know, some lid from boxes and some shoe box lid so you don't have to go fancy really reuse what you have to start with and a little box that was you know a jewelry box that i had already and you know just think and uh, be flexible with what you have and that's it you have your activities nicely displayed visible so if you do not have a shelf or a furniture that you can use I have used those little play mats in my house. I use them in the play group that I have. Uh, I have suggested that to people when they do not have 
furnitures, basically, that are available, or even use your coffee table, uh, you know, make it available for your children for the time being with a few activities. I've done that so many times uh, over the years with my children when they were little, or if we were going to uh, spend times um, abroad uh, with my families, I would reuse, uh, you know, uh, the under the under under the television uh, shelf or the coffee tables to display a few toys. Uh, so here I want to show you, you know, when you have big set of toys, like typically a twin set, uh, if you give to your child the wool, twin set is going to be very overwhelming. So try to cut in half the quantity and cut in half again and have something much simpler like this. Uh, that will be enough and add on as your child grows and become more uh, familiar with it. So regarding books, uh, you know, obviously Montessori is all about uh, reality-based books and we would encourage you to avoid fantasy in the first plane. Uh, so it's something that you can do today if Montessori is new to you um, and you haven't sorted the books, just start by that, you know, move away, uh, take away all the fantasy-based books and or most of them and replace them by some and replace them by some reality-based books, uh, anything that you have and and invest step by step in some uh, beautifully illustrated and reality-based books.